Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, talking about New York and California. Edward Abbey said, there's science, logic, reason. There's thought verified by experience. And then there is California. We never get through a day without California politicians proving how ridiculous they are. Two California Assembly members have introduced a piece of legislation that would effectively phase out leaf blowers, lawnmowers, and other outdoor power equipment. The new legislation is tied to California's attempts to mitigate the impacts of climate change. Apparently these legislators believe that last year's fires and drought were caused by people mowing their lawn. This seems incredibly irrational. Let's dig into it a little bit deeper. So let's go back in time three years to this article from the New York Times. California Today, 100 million dead trees prompt fears of giant wildfires. The article read, Mark A. Finney, an expert in fire behavior for the U.S. Forest Service and an author of the study, says California forests are much more vulnerable now because paradoxically they've been better protected. In their natural state, forests were regularly thinned by fire, but the billions of dollars that the state spends aggressively fighting wildfires and restrictions on logging have allowed forests to accumulate an overload of vegetation. So what the New York Times was saying three years ago is that poor forest management has caused 100 million dead trees to accumulate on the ground. And that this poor management had led to a fire catastrophe waiting to happen. And later that year, President Trump said the same thing. There's no reason for these massive, deadly, and costly forest fires in California except that forest management is so poor. So President Trump was agreeing with the analysis in the New York Times. But facts don't matter to the New York Times. As soon as President Trump agreed with them, they changed their story. Fact check. Trump's misleading claims about California's fire mismanagement. On Twitter, the president claimed that the state's wildfire woes are a result of poor forest management. That's almost exactly what the New York Times had said previously, but now that President Trump said it, New York Times facts had to be changed. Banning lawnmowers is just the latest incarnation of California government insanity. A few years ago, Governor Brown thought that he could stop droughts and wildfires by building a $100 billion train to nowhere. It takes a pretty impressive stretch of logic to believe that building a train will prevent droughts and fires. And 15 years ago, Governor Schwarzenegger thought that he could stop droughts and wildfires by taxing the citizens of California. Once again, it's a little bit difficult to understand the connection between taxes, droughts, and wildfires. But nothing that these people talk about makes any sense. Five years ago, the New York Times and Governor Brown announced the unending drought in California. And Wired Magazine agreed with them. Thanks, El Nino, but California's drought is probably forever. And then a few months later, California had their wettest winter on record with life-threatening floods. That was one of the shortest permanent droughts on record. Governor Brown in the New York Times liked declaring permanent droughts. Here's an article from the New York Times, March 8, 1977. Governor Brown warns of drought disaster, says hard choices face California. Governor Brown warned here today that drought-stricken California was facing a disaster of immeasurable magnitude. The specter of drought has been gathering momentum not only in California but across the country, the Democratic governor declared, adding that this is an era of limits and that there are very hard choices to make. I wonder if those choices included people giving up their lawnmowers. And then a few months later, on March 4, 1978, the New York Times reported that Southern California was flooded. The 1977 drought was another really short permanent drought, just like the one in 2016. One might think that the New York Times and Governor Brown would learn from their prior mistakes, but they repeated them over and over again. Every time a drought came to California, they determined that it was permanent. The article read, Storm raises fear of new floods and mudslides. State of emergency in Arizona. Youths in Tempe, Arizona turned a large board into a raft and paddled it across a flooded area. I was a senior at Arizona State University that year and was living in apartments very close to where this picture was taken. Now let's look at what the actual climate of California is. There's been essentially no trend in California precipitation since 1895. California had very dry years in 1976 and 1977 and then they had five very wet years in a row. 
This is the normal climate of California. One year is a drought and the next year is a flood. And every time there's a drought, like in 1977 and 2016, the New York Times and the California governor will declare it to be permanent. California has always been prone to serious droughts and fires. On December 5, 1936, the Santa Cruz News reported, Forest fires are current in Santa Cruz mountains for a century, seen as greatest peril to future prosperity. Data compiled by state forestry department show county visited by flames almost yearly since Big Fire of 1868, which ran across forested summits from watershed of the Pescadero to peaks of the Gavilons. Last year there was a big fire in the Santa Cruz Mountains at Big Basin and the press declared it to be unprecedented and the end of the world. It's unfortunate that modern newspaper writers don't actually read newspapers. If they did, they'd know how foolish they sound. They describe events, which happen every single year, as being unprecedented. But it hasn't always been this bad. Thirty years ago, newspapers occasionally told the truth. Los Angeles Times, Thursday, June 16, 1994. Ancient trees reflect century-long droughts. Analysis of tree rings shows that dry spells can last far longer than the state has estimated. A study of the stumps of ancient trees that once grew from stream beds and lake bottoms in the Sierra Nevada has turned up new evidence that droughts in California can last 100 years or more, far longer than the state's official estimates. So when carbon dioxide levels were much lower than now, California had century-long droughts. Yet California politicians believe that they can stop droughts by banning lawnmowers. The breathtaking ignorance and stupidity of these politicians is difficult to grasp. And here's a graph from the San Jose Mercury News showing 200-year-long droughts in California's past. Evidence from tree rings shows that drought was historically much more widespread in the American West than now, while the 20th century was wetter than normal. There's no scientific basis to these politicians' belief that they can prevent drought by lowering CO2 levels. In fact, the data shows the opposite. And here's a similar article from the New York Times from 1992. The article said that tree ring studies showed that drought and fire were pervasive throughout the West for a very long time. And the article also said that the tree ring study showed that the medieval warm period was global. But this was a few years before Michael Mann erased the medieval warm period because it didn't suit the agenda. Another interesting thing in this article was their discussion about how big forest fires in California were associated with La Nina events in the ocean. Thomas Swetnam and co-workers have discovered that major conflagrations sweeping across many mountain ranges in California and the southwest were a long a common feature occurring at least twice a decade and apparently linked to oceanic currents much farther south, the so-called La Nina events that often result in droughts. Finding the synchronicity in fire events was a big surprise to us, he said. It tells me that western landscapes and pre-settlement era were very smoky places. And the article went on, showed an extended and profound drought similar to those that frequently arise in the tree ring record again strike the west. They said the blooming central valley of California, a food basket to the nation, and already the region's most rapacious consumer of scarce water resources could become completely unsustainable. And here's another article from the New York Times from 1994. Severe ancient droughts, a warning to California. Beginning about 1,100 years ago, what is now California baked in two droughts, the first lasting 220 years and the second 140 years. Drought and fire is the normal climate of California and was actually much worse when carbon dioxide levels were lower. The idea that banning lawnmowers can prevent droughts and fires is based on mindless superstition and a complete ignorance of history. And here's a little bit more recent history from California from 60 years ago. The 1960 Winter Olympics at Squaw Valley, California almost had to be canceled because there was no snow. February 9, 1960, change to snow saves California Olympic site. Squaw Valley, California. Rain turned to snow just in time to avert possible disaster at the Winter Olympics. Now let's look at how climate scientists and the press have tried to rewrite history. Here's an article featuring Barack Obama's favorite climate scientist, Catherine Hayhoe. This 2006 article said, 
46 years ago this month, the world's athletes frolicked in the snow at the 1960 Winter Olympics in Squaw Valley, California. But Catherine Hayo said, By 26 years or so, if we don't change our ways, holding another Winter Olympics in Squaw Valley would be very difficult. But they weren't frolicking in the snow in 1960. The games almost had to be canceled because of a lack of snow. Climate scientists like Catherine Hayhoe are constantly rewriting history and hoping that nobody will check their work. And then clueless politicians listen to them. New Way California. Climate change is real. California Republicans believe it and are working to address it. Yes, it's California. Republicans are different here, and we always have been. Arnold Schwarzenegger imagines that he's saving the planet with his climate clown show. He doesn't know anything about science, and what California politicians are actually doing is driving people out of California into other states like Texas. These politicians keep believing that if we just sacrifice one more thing, we can fix the climate. They think that if we give up our tax money or car or lawnmower, we can prevent droughts and forest fires. This is the same mentality which the Aztecs had. Like California politicians, they thought that they could control the climate through the use of sacrifice. When they had a drought, they would keep sacrificing people until the drought ended. And at that point, they would determine that their sacrifices had been successful. Modern politicians love to sacrifice their subjects as well. After it became clear in November that Democrats had successfully created enough votes to claim the White House, gasoline prices started to skyrocket and are now up very close to $3 a gallon, which hasn't happened since the last time Joe Biden was in the White House. High energy prices is the most regressive tax on the poor and middle class. This is exactly the same mentality of human sacrifice from politicians. They're willing to sacrifice lots and lots of people in order to appease their climate gods. They believe that sacrifice is what their climate gods demand. In President Biden's proclamation of a national day of prayer, he mentioned climate change but didn't mention God. This is because climate change is the religion of the Democratic Party. Separation of church and state is supposed to be a fundamental part of U.S. government. But the global warming religion is now driving policy. I'm going to finish this up with a quote from G.K. Chesterton. When men choose not to believe in God, they do not thereafter believe in nothing. They then become capable of believing in anything. This is not an exaggeration. There are elected officials in California who believe they can stop droughts and forest fires by banning lawnmowers. These people should be getting laughed out of the room, but instead they're getting elected by people who live in California. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on this global warming death cult for the past 13 years. You can visit him and Kyrie on the web at realclimatescience.com.